Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So again, this is being recorded with voice memos and put over a uh, visual image in iMovie. Um, so this video is going to be difficult to watch, maybe for some of you, so I'm putting that out there. I'm going to be talking about suicidal ideation and various forms of assault, so feel free to uh, skip over it if you would like. Um, no, no judgment for me at all. So... I don't know when I'm going to post this because right now it's November 20th, um, so yeah. So, about two years ago, um, I was assaulted in my own apartment building. Um, there's a whole story that I'm not going to get into, but my blindness definitely played a role. And uh, it really, really messed me up for a while mentally. It was just like, ugh, it was bad. Um so, uh, literally, I was going on vacation, like, that week, the the day after, and so, that whole week, I was just, like, really out of it. Like, I was still functioning, but I was, like, so tired, and I was like, why am I so tired? But it was because my body was trying to adapt to what had happened and process it, and I was like, nope, we're not doing that. We're going to go do this now, like, you know. Um, but, yeah, so, I wanted to bring that to um, the, the the table, virtual table of conversation because um, I have been a person who have experienced that and, uh, you know, it's time we address it. Um, so, you know, I, I don't want to be that person that says, oh, if you're blind, you're more vulnerable because, like, that's not always the case, but sometimes it totally is. And I think if we deny that and say, oh, we're just blind, we can defend ourselves, like, sometimes you can't. If you have a disability... Whatever disability it is, sometimes you just, you can't. It doesn't, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, because, you know, if you can't hear and there's a fire and you can't hear the fire sirens, you know, whatever. It, it's just, it's a part of reality that you can't wish away. You can't make it stop. Um, so, in this instance, my blindness definitely played a role. Um, and uh, it really bothered me for a long time, honestly still does a little bit, because, you know, I kept telling myself, oh, well, if I would have done this differently, um, because my thing is that when I'm in a terrifying situation such as that, I freeze, and uh, it happened twice in the same, within like a 20-minute time span, I'd say, um, and I was really terrified, obviously, you know, and uh, I had always thought of myself as this person who was able to get away and, you know, fight, flight, and, and so I was like, nope, I'll just freeze, so, um, yeah, so, uh, after that happened, I went on vacation that next week, and it was awful, because I was so tired, and I just remember thinking, well, it's over, I should be fine, um, but I was not fine, and, uh, you know, trying to deal with that while being on vacation was an awful idea, um, I remember it, but honestly, everything that happened on that vacation is going to be overshadowed by what happened the day before. Um, it was a Sunday, and uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but um, I was a, a older person who assaulted me, and um, it was in a mostly public place, but there was no one around, um, so... Even if I would have been able to scream or something, that there was really no one that would have heard me. So, um, yeah. So, that was fun. Um, so after that, I became very hyper-aware, hyper-vigilant of everything. And uh, I had this weird obsession with self-defense. It was, like, really bad. Like, I was, like, looking on Amazon for hours about different knives and different kind of equipment. Because I was like, well, next time... I'm not going to freeze. Next time I'm going to fight. And um, unfortunately, that was next time. Um, different person. Um, they never got to the point of physically, you know, touching me or anything. But it was getting to that point. And um, I wasn't able to fight them. Um, I still froze. And, uh, you know, I, I eventually got away from them. There was like a whole situation. But um, it is terrifying and, uh, you know, difficult for me as a person because I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I can defend myself. I don't need anybody. And then it was like, well, surprise, 
I failed. Um, so I kind of wanted to go over the whole process of dealing with it, um, the after effects of it, how to function in the world as a blind person, because I'm sure there are some of you out there who haven't experienced it yet, but will. Unfortunately, it's part of reality. Um, and uh, I normally don't talk about this at all. So I apologize if I sound a little emotional. It's just like I never, I don't normally deal with this kind of thing very well. So, um, so right after it happened, um, I called the police and I was so terrified that, uh, I was like shaking and, um, I didn't really know what to tell them. Like, I remember calling them, but I don't remember what I said. And they came and uh, I remember trying to shake their hands because for some reason I always try to shake police officers' hands. I don't know why. It's just such a weird thing that I do. I'm like, hi, nice to meet you, even though, you know. And uh, they talked to me for a while. And at the time, they, the police officers were amazing. They were so nice. I was like, why? Why are, why are you being nice right now? Like, thank you. It meant a lot. Um, so they, they wrote a report and everything, and they... I asked them if they could email it to me because, you know, I can't read print. So they did that. And at the time I read it and I was like, oh, that sounds fine. Um, you know, and uh, it wouldn't be till months later when I looked at it like two in the morning one day. I was like, oh, crap, because there were whole parts that my brain blocked out and I didn't know it. So I'm like, yeah, they got everything. And then I'm like, oh, they forgot about this. And I, I, I didn't tell them because I forgot. You know, like my brain was like, nope, we're not remembering that. Um. So, you know, weeks pass, and I try to tell myself I'm fine. Um, it wasn't severe enough that I had to go to the hospital or anything like that, but um, it was definitely difficult, and uh, I called my roommate um, that day and told her what was going on because she was not there, um, and she was like, holy crap, what the heck, you know, and everybody was kind of shocked. My neighbor was shocked. Everyone was kind of shocked because, like, they all knew the person, and it was like, they wouldn't do that, and, you know, they did. Um, so I went on vacation, and even the people that I went on vacation with had no clue. They they didn't know, and I, I didn't tell them. It's been kind of a something I've been ashamed of, I guess, because, you know, we don't talk about this kind of thing out loud to people, anyone, anywhere. Um, and uh, so... I ended up moving out of that place um, because the person had to move out too, but I I just didn't feel comfortable being, being there alone at all. Um, it was to the point where someone had to follow me to go do laundry because I was like, I don't want to be alone. Like, what if they're waiting on me? Uh, because that's what they were doing. They were waiting on me that night. So, um, so you know, it was definitely difficult because I couldn't see them, and I was like, super anxious like my body was so tense trying to like be aware because I'm like oh crap what if they're around here what if they're around the corner what if they're watching me do this like I have no idea because I can't see their face like what if they're you know where are they because they can move very quietly um so later on like you know months later I moved back to my my hometown uh not a lot of people knew what was going on I didn't really tell a lot of people um my mom knew my dad knew, but they didn't know, like, everything because, you know, I didn't tell them the whole story. At the time, I thought I did, but I didn't. Um, and uh, it was difficult coming back here. You know, I had to learn how to walk around by myself and trust myself to walk. And I was like, oh, man, like, I'm terrified of everything. Um, and the part that really bothered me the most as a person that had experienced this was the fact that I didn't realize how much we talk about this kind of thing and there's so much jokes and myths about it like well you shouldn't address that way or you shouldn't have done this and this and I'm like I wasn't I was wearing you know I know exactly what I was wearing I remember it to the detail and uh you know it was just like well if you wouldn't have been stupid blah blah you know and it was just really hurtful um to me hearing this because like even some of my family was like, well, if you wouldn't have done this, then you wouldn't have caused it. And they, it was like victim blaming. And I felt so ashamed and so guilty because I'm like, they're right. You know, I, I, I suck at life. Like, what am I doing? 
why am I so upset by this? Like, I need to get over it. Like, I'm fine. And uh, so I just went on with life, pretending like I was fine, even though I was totally not fine. Um, so a couple months pass, and I'm back here. Um, and uh, was that the year? I think that was the same year my dad, my dad, my dad got COVID. Yes, so my dad was almost dying in the hospital that same time. And uh, the court people called me, and there was a whole court case because, you know, it was um, attempted R word. So I had to testify, and I've never done that before. I've never been in a courtroom, so I'm, like, Googling, what's a courtroom look like? What do I do? How do I do this? Because, like, I don't have any lawyer friends, so I can't be like, hey, lawyer friend, what happens? Um, the, only, the only background I had to go off of was people's written testimonies, um, you know, in books and Law and Order SVU, <laughs> you know, because uh, I got hooked on that show for a while. It was a whole thing. Um, I guess I was looking for clues. I was like, how do I act now? Like, what do I do? Because, like, this has destroyed me, like, mentally. I was really worried about doing a job because I was like, I can't handle men. I can't handle being close to people. I can't handle touching them. Um, it was visibly to the point where people noticed that I was flinching away from people. And they were like, I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just touching your shoulder. And it was just, like, really bad. Um, so a couple months passed, you know, and the court thing is going on. And uh, I, I called them up one day. The, uh, the I had, like, a victim advocate person. And I said, hey, can you please make sure that everything I receive is in electronic format? And they were like, well, why? And so I explained the whole process of being blind because they had no clue. I don't know why they didn't know because it was already written out, but whatever. Um, so they were very willing to give me printed stuff or uh, electronic format of everything. And they also gave me print stuff, which was, I understand it's their policy, but like for me, I live I live with um, other people. So they were seeing all that. Like every time I got something in the mail, they'd be like, oh, it says this. And I'm like, no, don't open that. That's mine. Um but yeah, so a couple months passed. It's now like January of 2022. And uh, that was, in the meantime, that's whenever my best friend was dying at the same time. So it was a rough year. 2021 to beginning of 2022 was just like the worst year of my life, honestly. Uh, but then I sometimes think that this year was the worst year, honestly, 2023. Uh, so my best friend's dying and I didn't really tell her the whole story, but I told her enough. So, you know, uh, here's me trying to be normal. My best friend's dying. My dad almost died. Um, and I'm losing my mind. Uh, and it was just really difficult. You know, I tried to function, but even things like taking a shower, I would be very weird about that. Like, I'd be like, okay, no one come in the bathroom while I'm taking a shower. Like, you know, it was just very... I was very aware of my body, and even now to this day, I have not went swimming in a pool since then. Um, I just feel very vulnerable, very uncomfortable, um, and I hate the fact that this person who assaulted me took that away from me because I used to enjoy swimming a lot, but now I'm just like, oh man, like what are people seeing? Like they're probably not creepers, but what if they are? And like I'm so exposed in this bathing suit, like, you know, I just don't feel comfortable. Um, you know, so even, even in the summer, I, I struggle with wearing shorts and wearing dresses and just things like that. Cause I'm like, oh man, like if I were attacked right now, this would not be the, the difficult clothes to get off. You know, somebody were trying to, so I just, I, I just felt very uncomfortable even at church. Um, you know, I, I just felt very exposed sometimes and church people are really nice but they also like to touch a lot it drives me crazy they're like can I hug you and I'm like no <laughs> like please go away <laughs> uh they're really sweet I, I really appreciate it but sometimes I'm just like oh my gosh don't touch me like just please leave me alone you can talk to me just please don't touch me and um some people still haven't gotten that message that I don't like being touched like they're very like oh I'm gonna hug you and I'm like please don't <laughs> Um, even though I know they're safe, but, like, convincing my brain that it's okay is, like, really difficult. Um, I got to the point where I hated crowds and restaurants and not sitting by the door. 
Um, even now, I try to sit by the door. Unless I'm with someone that I know, then I'm like, okay, I'm fine. They'll, they'll protect me. <laughs> um, so, in the meantime of all that, uh, I was struggling with my relationship with God. Um, I felt like He abandoned me, honestly. And uh, I know that we're supposed to come to Him when things get hard, but I felt like He wasn't there that night. Um, I was having all these nightmares where I'd wake up screaming and, um, my brain was constantly panicking and thinking that I, I fail at life because I couldn't defend myself. So I had this whole thing about how, you know, um, with God, like, he must hate me and that's fine because I'm not a fan of him anymore. That's where I was. I just couldn't make sense of it all because everyone said, you know, um, if you love God, it's going to be difficult. But I never realized how difficult it would be. Like, he took my best friend in the time that I needed her. And uh, he took away, like, literally everything um, that I had going for me in, in the place that I was at. With this guy, he, God just let it happen. And I just felt very... Uh, betrayed, honestly. So, 2022 happens, and I get a therapist, and uh, she was really cool. She was good. Um, it's just unfortunate because we had a court case going on, and I had to testify, and so we couldn't talk about it because, you know, if we talked about it, then it would mess up my testimony about how it impacts me and how it still does. Um, and so, you know, I got a therapist and everything. We talked about stuff, and uh, that was around the time I was losing my friends. We talked about that and her death, and she had a very dramatic death, so that was difficult. Um, I couldn't see her because of COVID, and um, I just kind of didn't even, like, I cried a couple times, but it wasn't severe, um, and I still miss her a lot because she was my best friend. And I convinced myself that I would never have any friends like that ever again. Um, and I also convinced myself at the same time that uh, I was still going to church. I was still functioning in the world. But God and I had grown distant um, because he wasn't there. And uh, I knew that I was supposed to forgive him, the, the guy that had assaulted me. Because, you know, growing up it was always like, well, if you forgive someone for hurting you, then God can forgive you. And I was like, well... God can't forgive me because I don't forgive this person. This hurt, person hurt me, and there's no going back to my life before where I felt safe in the world, um, where I wasn't constantly going, hmm, if I go walk on the street, is someone going to rob me? Like, you know, I couldn't function very well. And um, so I knew that if, you know, if, if I was going to ever get right with God, I had to forgive this person. I just couldn't. So... The trial was supposed to be a couple months, like, it, it was ha supposed to happen, like, four or five times, and they kept moving it and canceling it, and the person was, like, sick, and, like, all this different stuff happened. Um, so, we we're finally going to have it on Valentine's Day of 2023, and uh, it got to the point where I was attempting suicide. Um, I was going to do it on New Year's of 2020, like, into 2023, beginning of 2023, into 2022. Um, but unfortunately, at the time, at the time, I got invited to a uh, a um, Christian retreat thing, so I did that. And it's still in the back of my mind, you know. And one of the students that spoke that that weekend had had her own experience of sexual assault. Oops, I said the word. Sorry, YouTube. Uh, and it just was really hard for me to deal with um because they were they were dealing with it and I was like how what do they do I want to be like them like they're so bold and I'm just like I'm not I'm ashamed um I'm ashamed that I let this person still affect me even two years later you know and uh it wasn't the r word so why am I so ashamed and why am I so upset about it like you know it didn't physically hurt me so why am I so broken. So, in 2022, 2023 happened, and we had New Year's Eve, and it was really good. We had, like, a chill get-together, and 
you know, I obviously didn't do anything that weekend. Well, then, the next week, um, the person who had assaulted me passed away. I didn't know it until the day, like, two days after that. And I was like, I just remember this pure panic that went through me because I was like, you know, crap. Because I told myself that when the trial came, I would forgive them. After after I got my fair sense of justice, which, honestly, it was never going to be fair. Um, the way it was going to be is the person was had, a, had their own disability, and so it was going to be my disability against theirs type of thing. And uh, it, was, it would have been a battle. Um, but my my pure panic was because... With them dying went my chance of forgiveness for them, which then there there goes my chance of being forgiven by God. So feeling abandoned and just like I really screwed up in life and I was never going to make it right again, I decided to end my life. So uh, I'm not going to go into the details about how that happened, but um, I did attempt and at the time I didn't call it that. Um, I didn't tell anybody, really, not my family, not hardly anybody, just a couple people, um, so my therapist gave her my, my methods, and I was like, here, hold on to this, uh, but literally, so, fast forward, I went to Arkansas for an internship, came back home, got a new therapist, uh, and that therapist wrote in her notes that I was, I had attempted to in my life. And I was like, holy crap. Like, oh, crap. Like, it finally hit me that it was real. And I had actually attempted. And I was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> um, and in the meantime of all that, you know, I made another video recently about forgiveness. But that was a whole process because... Acknowledging that the pain that they had put me through was affecting me and being able to let it go. I'm still not all the way there. It's kind of like 50-50. I'm like halfway between forgiving and not all the way yet. Um, but it's more I need to forgive myself because I still blame myself for part of that that night. Um, I know intellectually I didn't do anything wrong, but just like I was there. So I, I did something, you know. So... Learning to forgive myself was definitely difficult, and uh, trying to reconnect with God was a challenge. Um, I was Googling how to deal with assault as a Christian, how to find God, and all that. Like, I was, like, Googling all these different things, and uh, everyone had these really cool stories, you know, and they were like, yeah, I did this, and I'm I'm really bold now, and I, I work in this whatever ministry, or I have this job that does blah, blah. And I'm like, man, you know what? Like, I want to be like them. Like, I admire them so much for living. And I'm just, like, stuck in this this spot. Um, even now, I'm kind of still stuck there. Like, I, I'm I'm okay mentally, uh, you know, sometimes. Uh, and uh, I'm not suicidal at the moment. Um, but I'm not fully 100% comfortable with touch yet. I'm not fully... In fully 100% comfortable with my body yet. Um, I hate the fact that uh, a couple weeks ago I went to aller- went to get allergy tested and literally I shook the whole time. My whole body was shaking so badly that I couldn't hold the leash. I kept dropping it. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I know that I'm not physically as okay as I claim to be, but I'm trying my hardest to get there. And um, just wanted to make this video to bring awareness to this issue of of assault and how it impacts a blind person. Um, and I'm making this on YouTube because I, I, I looked that up as well. As a blind person, I looked up uh, surviving, you know, assault after disability or like, you know, all these different things and nothing really came up. And, um, People say that I was lucky because I couldn't see their face. Um, But I beg to differ with that because I could still hear their voice and I I felt their hands. And uh, even now, when I go stand next to a random guy, like, you know, not random, but like my dad or somebody, he's pretty tall. 
the, the person that assaulted me was pretty tall as well. Um, and, like, certain things, like, if someone puts their hand on my shoulder, like, I, I cringe. And, uh, you know, I'm still not still not 100% my old self. I don't think I'll ever be my, own, my old self. Um, but I'm trying to look for the good in all this. And that's been hard. Um, I found God again, so that's been amazing. I screamed at God. <laughs> like, whenever I, once we got connected um, at the uh, retreat I went to, Someone literally said, if you need to go scream at God, do it. And I was like, all right, all right, I have a lot to say to God. And so I was just writing and screaming in my head. <laughs> um, if you need to scream at God, definitely go do it. It's very refreshing. Like, God wants all our feelings, and if it's anger and screaming, then go for it. Like, he's not going to be like, oh, did you hear that person? They were just, you know. So please do that. It's very comforting, very relaxing. It's <laughs> like... Oh, I felt so good to get all that out. Like, I was like, oh, I hate you. Like, why would you do this? And I was just, you know, going on and on. And at the end, he was still there. And I know uh, some of you aren't Christian. Some of you don't believe in God. That's fine. Um, but knowing that even though I pulled away from God, he was still there. Like, that really got to me because... You know, I kept saying it. Uh, I kept saying to myself that, well, I turn away from God, so God must hate me, and He doesn't. Um, he wants us to come back to Him, and I was like, "Are you sure, God? Because I've screwed up a lot." And then He was like, "Well, look at the Bible," and so I did. And you know, you see all the Israelites, and they screwed up a lot too. I mean, they sacrificed idols and were sacrificing things to a golden cow, and like all these different things, and. He still wanted them, and I'm like, you know, like, I don't know why, because, like, we screwed up a lot. You could have just been like, you're all dead, bye, but you weren't, so thank you for that. Um, And, yeah, so if you've been to that point where you are considering ending your life, I mean, it's a difficult place to be. Your mind doesn't really think logically, so... Your emotional brain starts going, and you're like, man, I suck at life. Uh, I'm just going to fail at everything. And that's a very scary place to be um, because you can't always use your logical brain to think about things. So um, my only advice is to, to wait. Wait an hour. Wait two hours. Wait a week. I don't care. Wait, wait long enough to where something in your mind starts taking over logically. Because I know people who have done it, and they failed, and they ended up worse off than what they were, and um, that's part of the reason that stopped me, is I was like, you know what, knowing me, I'm going to fail at this anyway, I'm going to fail at trying to end my life, and uh, ultimately I did, but, um, you know, seeing the people, reading the stories about people who had tried and failed, and they ended up worse off physically or had some issues, you know, whatever. I was mad about that with God, too. I was like, seriously, God, you can't give us control of our lives. Like, let us do this. And he was like, I'm in control, not you. So, too bad. So, please wait. Think about everything you're going to do. And, you know, Write out what you want to do. Maybe come back in about a week and a half, two weeks, a month, a year, even a year. Oh, a year would be good. And just think to yourself, man, am I still that way? Um, if you are, definitely reach out to one of the crisis line people. I know it seems weird because, like, you think, oh, crap, they're going to be all judgmental. They're not judgmental. They're chill. I was shocked. I was like, they're going to be so ashamed of me. And they were just like, it's fine, man. Tell me your problems, you know? <laughs> so... Definitely do that. Um, tell them the truth. Don't don't lie to them. And, uh, you know, because honestly, there's still a part of me that does want to end my life, you know, deep down, buried, and all the other stuff. But then the other part of me says, you know what, self? Like, there's so much more you have to experience in the world. So much things you want to see. Um, so many things you have to do, like, literally... I have some friends that I've made that are like, you need to come to my wedding, you need to be in my wedding. And I'm like, 
are you sure you want me in your wedding? Like, I'm really a screwed up person at the moment, you know, I, I really messed up. And they're like, yeah, we want you there. And I'm like, okay, so I have to go to the wedding, which I'm, I'm excited about. But like, that keeps me holding on, you know, I, I have to go to the wedding and I have to do this and this. And I really want to see where my life ends up taking me. I don't know if I'll get a job ever uh, or if I'll become something that I'm proud of to be like, yeah, when I was this years old, I did this and now I'm like here, you know. Um, but if I give up, I'll never see that. So I kind of want to see what happens to me in the future. So anyway, sorry this got really deep. But uh, if you're out there and you're struggling with assault or the after effects of assault, um, feel free to share this video or, you know, comment, whatever you want to do. I don't know if you can comment anonymously, but um, I'll definitely be praying for you all. And uh, thank you all for watching. She got her button. Double